Welcome back to The Morgan Show. I'm Sierra Burnett, and up first with football, the Bears lost their home season opener to Towson University. Volleyball completed their non-conference play with the win over Bowie, and the men's cross-country team finished third at the Delaware State Sting Invitational. Let's get into it. Morgan State fell to Towson in the battle for Greater Baltimore football game last Saturday. The Tigers own a 22-6 record in the all-time series and have hoisted the trophy 10 out of the past 11 meetings. The last time Morgan defeated Towson was on September 26, 2009. Here's Lake Marion with more on the story. Morgan State students set the stage for a rivalry game called the Battle for Greater Baltimore on Saturday, but the Morgan State football team never found their battle armor. The Bears fell to the Towson Tigers 20-10 in their first home game of the season. The Bears have now lost two straight games, but this one was more unexplainable than last week. Coach Damon Wilson noted his team's malaise. Uh, they were more physical than us. They was, you know, they they uh they pushed us around a little bit up front. Um, I think we settled down and, and and played a little better second half. But all in all, they out they they were more physical than us. They wanted it more. I think we came out thought we were just gonna roll out and they were gonna give us a ball game. So we didn't play well at all. Uh, yes, house. Morgan's offense sputtered and stalled, producing 285 offensive yards and a late game touchdown. Wilson's group had followed the shaky lead of his third quarterback rotation. He agreed that they needed to find composure. Quarterback Deuce Taylor had a rough game. He finished 9 for 24 with 96 passing yards, zero touchdowns, and three interceptions. Taylor was benched late in the third quarter for Dominique Anthony, who only played for one drive in the fourth quarter. The Bears played all three of their quarterbacks and each struggled to give the team a spark. They completed less than half of their passes combined and turned the ball over a total of four times. Coach Wilson discussed how the offense will fix their problems. We just got to continue to get better as a team. You know, I mean, of course, offensively, we want to be able to create uh, some points and some opportunity to score the ball. We have a very young ball club, but at the end of the day, we're trying to ingrain certain things in these young men, and we're working on it every day to get better. The defense continues to start off slow in the first half, allowing the Tigers' offense to score 20 points early in the game. However, for the third straight week, they continue to shut down the opposing offense, not allowing any second-half points to be scored. MEAC Special Teams Player of the Week, Jordan Toes, blocked the field goal attempt and ran it back for a touchdown late in the game. Coach Wilson talks about the second half performance from the defense. I think the coach is doing a good job making the necessary adjustment at the half, and the guys are playing more focused in the second half. The Bears will play against the University at Albany on September 23rd at Hughes Stadium. Thank you, Lake. Despite its loss to Towson, Morgan's players continued to collect MEAC accolades this season. Two players were named honorees, Dexter Carr Offensive Lineman of the Week and Jordan Toll Specialist of the Week. The Bears hold a 1-3 overall record. The MEAC has selected four Morgan players as Player of the Week this season. The team earned FedEx Ground National Team of the Week honors after a victory over 16th-ranked Richmond to open the season. In a measure to increase security at athletic events, Morgan State has announced an update to its clear bag policy. Only clear plastic, vinyl, or PVC bags are allowed at all athletic venues. This new update starts on Saturday, September 23rd, during the Albany football game at Hughes Stadium. Bags should not exceed a size of 12 inches by 12 inches high and 6 inches deep. Prohibited bags include backpacks, camera cases, and large printed bags. All bags or persons are subject to inspection by event staff. The volleyball team closed out the non-conference portion of its schedule with a three-set win over Bowie State at home on Tuesday. The Bears dropped two matches at the Cornell Invitational prior to that loss. They opened MEAC conference play on September 22nd against Maryland Eastern Shore with a 5-10 overall record. Our reporter Kelsey Jones looks at how the Bears are preparing for the next stretch of competition. As Morgan State's women's volleyball team makes their way through the season, their serving also makes it second in the entire MEAC nation. Serving is one of the most important things in the game of volleyball, and an ace, which is when the opponent doesn't touch the serve, is what to strive for. With Morgan having 99 aces this season, it gives them just the right advantage to beat the challenging teams and go all the way to the championship this year. Anara Fernandez and Maya Kirik, who are their top servers, tell us a little bit about what the first serve means in the game of volleyball. I think the first serve is very important because it's going to dictate the, the, the game. And, uh, and there is a pressure to be the first touch. 
So uh, having that pressure is good because we are going to feel how the game is going to be at the end. Maya Keurig explains how making the first serve is one of the many things that sets the tone for the match. I think making the first serve, it really sets the tone um, and just like keeping our side of the court simple. That's one of the things in volleyball that you can like fully control yourself. Serving is one of the best strategies in volleyball and coach Ziamora Ortiz explains what they do to meet their goal in serving and to keep the game in their hands. So we're trying to find two aces for every error that we do have. Um, again, so that way we can even out and balance, if anything, those giveaway points to straight up earned points. Um, and so the more aggressive we can be on the service line, um, you know, we're attaining those points back and or getting the opponent out of system. With having two top servers on their roster and being second in the MIAC for serving, the Bears are definitely on the right track. On September 15th, Morgan State kicked off its season at the Delaware State University Sting Invitational. The men's team recorded a third-place win with Perry Bennett and Davion Gray finishing in the top 10. Davion Gray is a senior from Manville, Jamaica. He finished last season as an All-American and has kicked off yet another hard cross-country season. He returns as a standout for the Bears. Our reporter Cameron Kelly caught up with him this week. Senior Damian Gray is running into high gear and has higher expectations for the fall season. Having a taste for winning in medals, the top 10 runner is looking to add to his collection this upcoming season. My main thing is I want to improve on last year. Last year I came eighth in, in Mia cross country season. Top 15 received medals. Mm -hmm. And I, I was one of the, the athletes at Morgan that received medals. I was, I was actually the only male athlete that received medals. I came eighth and I want to improve on that. I want to get a new PB and help my school be on top. The mid-distance runner is looking to leave his personal best in the dust as he discusses his individual and team goals. I mean, it's all about getting the personal best because before I came here, I transferred here last year. And since I've got here, I haven't received like personal best, but I've medal, but haven't like improved on my times. Mm -hmm. And that's like my main objective. Davian Gray and the Morgan State Bears did just that at the Delaware State Farm Invitational. Davian finished in fifth place right behind his teammate Perry Bennett, who finished in fourth. At the Delaware State Invitational, uh, Davian and I finished fourth and fifth. Respectfully, we were in the front pack for the majority of the race. And then towards the end, he kind of fell off. Davian could do a lot better. Um, he had run a lot faster in the past and I expect him to get beyond that this season. So he's just working his process through. I think he have a plan, and now we're going to stick with the plan for the next two meets and see where we are. And if any changes we need to make going into the conference, we make those changes. The men's cross-country team recorded a third-place finish with four runners in the top 25. Our next meet is on homecoming day, which is crazy. It's on the 7th of October. We are heading up to New Jersey, which is going to be a more challenging event for us because they're gonna have a lot more schools and a lot more schools that are competitive in cross country. But again, we're gonna go there with, with the intent to have 1% each and every day. And I think we will get where we're trying to go if we put in a 1% daily. Thank you, Cameron. Up next is Lake's takes from Morgan's home opener against Towson. So Lake, going into this game, many people thought that Morgan State would finally start to close the gap, but we lost 20 to 10. What were your overall thoughts of this game? Well, Brandon, my overall thoughts of this game was that the offense struggled mightily. You know, Deuce Taylor ended up throwing three interceptions. The defense got off to a really slow start. Uh, the special teams, they did what they had to do, but it wasn't enough. I definitely agree with the, we being put in a big hole in the first half and just fighting back but not overcoming. What were your overall takeaways from the game? So my takeaways from the game was that the offense couldn't find a rhythm. That's one. Uh, they, they struggled to get everything going. As I said before, Deuce Taylor throwing three interceptions, you can't have that happen. Uh, and then uh, developing like a big hole in the, into the game, it didn't work out for them in the end. Uh, the second take that I got is that the Tigers just out straight up outplayed the Bears throughout all four quarters of the game. I know that the uh, the Bears ended up getting the block field goal and scoring a touchdown, but it was a little too late for them at that point. So uh, when you got to play like that against a team that's coming out ready, it, w it wasn't a good look for them. Uh, third, I would say that they're always again they're always off to a slow start for three their past three games now against Akron, against Richmond, and now against Towson. Every game they've been down at one point before halftime. 
So those slow starts, they got to learn a way how to adjust to that and actually pick up the pace a bit. Uh, my fourth take would be the uh, defense and special teams is keeping the Bears alive in their games, as we have seen. Uh, defense, especially, if you didn't know, is that in their three games that they play in the second half, they have not allowed a single offensive touchdown. So they're still keeping that up. They did it against Towson this time, held them to 20 points for the rest of the game. Really good. That's a really good look for the Bears. Hopefully they can keep that up. And then my last take is I think that the Bears are missing Alfonso Graham. Uh, they got to get the run game going. They haven't really been able to get the run game going, and then losing their MEAC leader in rushing yards, uh, it really hurts them bad. So hopefully they can do better this time around coming up against Albany. I definitely agree. Thank you for your takes. And back to you, Sierra. I'm Sierra Burnett, and for all of us here at The Morgan Show, thank you for watching. Tell my story across the world, look, mama, I'm doing it right. Yeah, I'm a man, but I still cry, and it's hard to sleep right at night. See, I'm a soldier, and I'm getting closer to the life that I like. Cause we getting older, life getting shorter, I'm married to match my off-white. Uh, really living a movie, you ain't me, so I don't care what you used to. Better be careful.